Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, 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 I, re I really appreciate the organizers for this workshop. Wonderful uh, place for all the non-equilibrium uh, uh, and stochastic thermodynamic people get gathering together. And today I'm, I'm trying to pack actually lots of different interesting toys uh, that uh, my research group has been playing uh, in the past few years, and mostly toward the design principles of interesting non-equilibrium uh, kind of machines or uh, uh, molecules. Um, so without further delay, let me show you. Oh, can you see my mouse, hopefully? Um, yes. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, before we start, I want to really say that, well, thermodynamic laws are really beautiful and general. But if you're only looking at the thermodynamic laws, no matter how general they are, how, 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 how pretty they are, uh, actually there is a gap before you can really design real life machines. So uh, that well, uh, was actually resolved by lots of engineers. They're using laws of thermodynamics. They're collecting more and more specific data for certain uh, kind of substances. And then the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, they basically converted those very universal and dry uh, uh, principles into design principles that is uh, kind of more practical. So along, along that line, I want to uh, basically uh, uh, help, uh, kind of lead us to a set of questions here that is, in stochastic thermodynamics, it has been really successful in the uh, uh, past few decades, explaining uh, systems that are at a nanoscale, systems that are arbitrarily far from equilibrium. In fact, their uh, uh, first law, uh, second law are all kind of brought into non-equilibrium and um, uh, uh, nanoscale uh, by the uh, advancement in the uh, stochastic thermodynamics. And uh, furthermore, there are so many uh, interesting directions emerging in, in the field of stochastic thermodynamics. It has information thermodynamics uh, that talk about uh, what, what is the thermodynamic cost of information processing, talking about sensing, talking about uh, uh, computation. And also uh, there are uh, uh, nice, uh, uh, nice results on uh, uh, uncertainty relation, which relates entropy production rate and the uh, uh, fluctuation of current. And also uh, there, are, there are studies of strongly interacting systems and also a study of ge uh, uh, ge ge geometry in, in thermodynamics. And those are all nice and beautiful theories. And I, uh, I apologize that this, this is such a small space. I cannot really pack all the, uh, all the uh, uh, interesting references here, but I want to give us a pause and ask one question. Before we declare victory in understanding how we can design uh, things out of stochastic thermodynamics, we have to mind the gap. There is a gap between the general and universal thermodyn thermodynamic laws and theories um, and the practical design principle of living matter. Um, let me show you uh, what do I mean here. On the left, I'm showing you, uh, well, we can probably call that a living matter. It's definitely alive. Uh, uh, there is an immune cell that is a uh, hold at this location. And on the left, an experimentalist uh, hold a pathogen that the immune cell would like to eat. And uh, uh, you will see that this little bag of molecules are able to detect the environment and uh, sense that there is something you want to eat and uh, generate motion and deform itself uh, trying to go to the, to the, uh, to the thing that they want to eat. It, it, it's kind of amazing that uh, this tiny bag of chemicals and molecules can kind of work together to recognize temporal patterns of ex external stimuli. And also they can respond to the st stimuli and uh, carry out certain functions. Uh, and also very interestingly that uh, they are able to autonomously extract ambient non-equilibrium energy. So please notice that I'm trying, uh, I'm, I'm putting a non-equilibrium here uh, because if someone says uh, we're able to extract energy from a uh, equilibrium environment, uh, without other uh, with, without other cost, and then we know we should uh, we, we should not trust that person. But here, if in realistic environment, when the environment itself is uh, out of equilibrium, uh, maybe some smartly uh, designed or nicely evolved uh, uh, things, living matter or artificial things, uh, they they can they can probably extract the non equilibrium energy from the already out of equilibrium environment. But really, can we design all of this using one set of universal theory? I guess the, the answer is no, um, but theorists can still take the challenges. Uh, we can take the challenges uh, in stochastic thermodynamics. We have tools to study thermal fluctuations. In stochastic thermodynamics, we have also the ability to describe non-equilibrium uh, systems. But there are still lots of challenges that I want to uh, highlight here that if you want to design a living matter that is so smart 
able to extra extract information from a time changing environment, recognize the patterns and uh, respond uh, accordingly. You have to admit that we need a theoretical tool that can deal with things that are not just at non-equilibrium steady state, but kind of driven by a time dependent protocol. And also, uh, depending on what kind of task you want your little living matter can achieve, uh, the, 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 the system might have a different kind of complexity. And also uh, uh, at the end, I want to emphasize that uh, uh, while we're kind of getting our hand dirty, going into the specific applications or specific performances of interest, it is very likely that we cannot find so universal laws like, like the laws of thermodynamics as our design principles. But still, we seek to we seek we want to seek the design principle of non-equilibrium uh, kind of from non-equilibrium thermodynamics and stochastic thermodynamics and apply that uh, or convert that, that into a language that is kind of getting a little bit closer to the uh, practical design of certain uh, cer certain systems. Now, if uh, uh, I, I were to just put a little bit a tiny advertisement of what we have been doing in the past a few years in, in, in my research group. We have been studying kind of different little lovely uh, uh, design principles of uh, different interesting uh, behaviors. The, the first one that we'll talk about is uh, uh, how can we design uh, the energy landscape of catalysts or enzymes that can really harness energy from an oscillating environment. Um, and also there, there are uh, things when, when we are interested in driving system out of equilibrium, we also would like to ask, are there shortcuts that can allow us to drive a system from one state to another state without delaying in any of the slow dynamics. Um, uh, and also in, in, in our group, we have to, uh, worked on a bunch of uh, interesting information theory and uh, biological sensing uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, works. And uh, one that is uh, we actually designed a, uh, a toy model, a proof of principle uh, demonstration that a single molecule can perform information computation, just like a finite determinist automaton, or, uh, or it, can, it can be used to recognize temporal patterns of uh, signal and store it in its uh, transient uh, metastable configuration. And there are also other information uh, kind of uh, well, uh, sensing and information kind of works we uh, worked on, but uh, today we will focus on the, the, the first one. That is, how can we design or how can we come up with a design principle of good catalysts or good enzymes that can harness energy from a uh, oscillatory environment? So imagine if your environment is changing in time. Uh, the fact that it is changing in time itself is actually uh, can be considered as a thermodynamic driving force. Can we use that to drive a catalytic network to achieve something that uh, equilibrium or stationary state uh, uh, thermodynamics uh, that can never allow us to do. So that is the, that is the uh, topic that I want to discuss today. And uh, there are other, other finds uh, uh, on thermodynamics. I'll just skip through this slide. So first, first of all, I want to say that, uh, uh, in fact, it, it is uh, not new a concept that an uh, um, enzyme or catalyst or molecular machine can harness energy from a periodically changing environment. Uh, in fact, in the most interesting, I guess, uh, uh, paradox uh, uh, in, in, that, in that sense is the flashing ratchet by Perondo, uh, and of course, later studied by many, many more. And also, uh, uh, there are stochastic pumps studied by many people. I also see uh, people from our, our uh, workshop here. And uh, also, there are studies uh, from a chemistry, uh, kind of from the field of chemistry, people have uh, uh, studied uh, a catalyst uh, pumped by oscillation. And here the oscillation can be a temperature oscillation in the environment that pumps your catalyst, or it could be a, a oscillation of electrical field. There are many, many references here that I cannot fit in here. And also uh, there are interesting general theories of how does a, a periodic oscillation can give you non-equilibrium steady, give you states that mimic non-equilibrium steady state uh, that was uh, done in this, uh, in this reference. Uh, but just to move on, I want to kind of bring bring to your attention uh, for audience in our workshop. I'm pretty sure everyone knows the flashing ratchet, but just for the students in 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 the audience, I would like to just show you that the flashing ratchet is actually a, a quite a, a simple idea. That is the following: if you have a system on a, a one-dimensional uh, degree of freedom that is under diffusion, and if you flash between uh, two kind of energy landscapes, one is a sawtooth shaped that is asymmetric and another is flat, if you keep uh, flashing back and forth, 
uh, at the end of the day, the probability distribution of uh, your, your particle or the system will actually have a net drift to one side of the energy landscape. And uh, then imagine if you introduce a tiny tilt uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is upheld to the right, then this kind of, uh, well, this kind of uh, drifted uh, motion is actually harnessing energy from the non-equilibrium work that you, you have performed by switching the, uh, the, the energy landscape and uh, store that energy into the potential energy of the particle. But with that many uh, theories and examples and uh, uh, toy model system and more realistic systems, uh, still missing is a, a kind of a general design principle. That is, can we have something to say about what is a good shape energy landscape to actually facilitate this kind of ability of extracting uh, uh, energy from an oscillatory environment? And that is the task that we're going to address today. So on the left, uh, I'm showing you a very simple model, but the theory itself is general. It can be applied to a uh, arbitrary number of states of catalysts, uh, and uh, it can also be applied to catalysts of uh, multiple uh, cycles on, on the graph. But here I'm just showing you a three state graph of uh, a catalyst that catalyst can be in the state one, two, or three. But by completing a cycle, it will convert one high free energy reactant into a low free energy product. And we know that according to thermodynamics, the affinity of the, uh, the affinity or the free energy change of the reaction is basically uh, uh, set here. And that tells us the reaction, the reaction should always go in the clockwise uh, direction on average. But the question is the following. Now imagine if I am oscillating the environmental uh, condition, maybe that will cause a change of shape of energy landscape between two shapes, or maybe I can fix the energy landscape and just oscillate the temperature can I achieve a, 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 a kind of a, or can I, can I achieve a one performance that is, even though at each stationary condition A and stationary condition B, we always want to go from R to P, uh, but after the oscillation, can we have this reaction inverted? So you can see this two energy landscape on the left are just the stationary energy landscape and they are tilted to the right. But um, after oscillation- Just want to point out that you're into the question time. No. Oh, I see. Yeah, oh, I'll, I'll be very, very quick here. So uh, uh, at the end of the day, we basically want to ask, how can we design this? And now let me just uh, tell you uh, something really simple. That is uh, for a Markov model of catalyst, we can uh, write down the, the master equation. And master equation is uh, basically giving you a mat rate matrix that is controlled by an external control parameter. Here it can be inverse temperature beta. And at steady state, you can always solve for the steady state uh, probability distribution. And uh, you can basically predict the steady state performance of a catalyst. However, if we want to go to the oscillation limit, let us uh, consider one catalyst defined by one energy landscape, but controlled by different temperature in the rate uh, space. Here we define a rate space that is a, a, a Cartesian space where each axis is just the or the, the one of the reactions reaction rate. So for n-step reaction, you have a two n-dimensional space. And the catalyst's energy landscape will basically give you one curve that on each point of the curve, that is basically one temperature, and maybe this is another temperature. But if you start to oscillate very quickly between the two conditions, the system will actually achieve an effective non-equilibrium steady state that is dictated by a rate vector that is here. So you're basically achieving a new rate matrix. Now imagine if this new green dot is achieved and giving you a different thermodynamic direction. Here on the left in the R space, I have a isosurface of affinity or so-called free energy and everything above you have positive affinity and everything below you have negative affinity. Now imagine if I have this black curve that is on this shape, but if I start oscillating, I will basically achieve an effective rate matrix or the catalyst will behave as if it is below the surface. That means the reaction uh, direction is, uh, is, is changed. So basically we have this design principle here using the geometry. I'll basically uh, sk skip through the details, but basically we want to uh, ask how, how, what is the direction of the bended curve? And it can be described by the second order derivative. And uh, what is the direction of the increasing of the thermodynamic affinity? By making a dot product, you can find the general design principle that is only related to activation energy. 
And uh, I will skip through the more general case, but basically you can design, use the same design rule for arbitrary uh, thermodynamic uh, performances and arbitrary environmental parameters. And uh, there are applications we uh, have shown, but I probably have no time to uh, discuss. And uh, I would like to just end here. And if there is any question, thank you. Thank you. I think we have time for one question. Uh, so if anyone want to ask a question. Um, okay, uh, Peter. Yeah, well, you, you, you mentioned, uh, thanks for the talk, uh, right? I, I like this idea very much. And, and you, you started by motivating uh, that you want to, um, um extract sort of generic principles can you give an example of a generic principle that you now have uncovered here oh uh, so so for example here we basically uh, uh have introduced well maybe start from the simple one it turns out if you want to design a catalyst uh, or a catalytic energy landscape of the reaction such that it can harness energy from a uh, a temperature oscillation environment the design principle is in a very clean form that is independent of the temperature that you choose, independent of the temperature protocol you choose. And it's only having this very simple dependence on the activation energies of each reaction and its inverse. So at the end of the day, the design principle is the following. If you want to have the reaction invert a spontaneous thermodynamic direction after temperature oscillation, you might want to have the square sum of all the positive uh, uh, reactions activation energy to be very small, but the square sum of the all the negative uh, uh, reactions uh, activation energy to be very large. And mm -hmm. this actually is a pretty counterintuitive thing because you want to want the reaction to go backward, but you are making the uh, backward activation energy more kind of rough. So I, I, I don't know if that answers the question. Um, well, except that the last thing is not so clear, but 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 it, yeah, yeah, I think you you addressed yeah. it uh, well, yeah. Yeah, well, I hope to. Uh, well, I'll I'll be able to uh, share this if you want to send me an email. But thank you for the question. Yeah. This yeah. derivation is actually just three lines, so uh, it's actually quite simple. Right. Okay, in few of the time, let's stop. But thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um. Okay, um, so I think we are kind of running late, so we'll have to move on. Um, 